Today, we're going to take a look at piecewise functions. This particular piecewise has a quadratic, a square root, and an absolute value in it. Uh, we're going to break this up in three different lines, keeping in mind that f of x is almost the same thing as y. So let's, let, let's write it that way. Keep it easier on our eyes. y equals parenthesis x plus 3 squared. So because we have an exponent of 2, we know that we're going to have a parabola. We know we're going to have that U-shaped graph. Um, if we go back to our rules of um, transformations, we know that we have that U, and we're going to end up just shifting it to the right three spots. So to make a table of values, or we could use these quick rules. Let's use the quick rules. So let's take that U, go back three spots, and there you go. Okay, let's keep in mind that we have to follow our constraints now. Our constraints are these things at the end. Um, X is less than or equal to negative two. First thing I want you to do, we're gonna take that negative two, we're gonna draw a wall, a little invisible wall. It's not part of the graph, it's just invisible to help us kind of decide what we're keeping. Now, uh, we keep the graph that is less than negative two. What side is less than? Everything to the left. We keep that side, everything on the right, goodbye. Now, at that wall, at that invisible wall, because I have an equal sign here, I'm going to put a solid dot. Okay, next, let's move on to our middle guy. We have y equals square root x plus 1. So a square root function we should know is kind of like a parabola, kind of like this half arch, but on its side and only half of it. So if we took that, knocked it to the side, there you go. This follows the same transformation rules. So inside here, I have a plus one. That means I'm shifting this whole thing back one. Okay. So instead of starting at the origin, we move back one. And there you go. Uh, now let's use our constraints. Let's start by looking at this. X is less than three. We want to keep the graph that is less than three. So we find three. We build a little invisible wall. I keep it that's less than three. Everything less than is going to be over there. All this, goodbye. At that wall, because there is no equal sign, open circle. Okay? Let's take a look at the second constraint. Or I guess the beginning half of this. I don't like how that's read. I don't like how that's written. So I'm going to change the order. Instead, I'm going to say x and a negative 2. This, uh, this inequality opens up and it eats the x. I want it to continue to open up and eat the x. Now this is easier to read. I want to keep the graph when x is bigger than negative 2. I want to keep the graph bigger than negative 2. So we draw a wall at negative 2. Well, kind of already have one. I keep the side that's bigger than that. That's going to be everything to the right. Now, we don't have anything at this wall because... Our graph doesn't even go back that far. That's fine. Normally, there would be an open circle here because of the inequality, but there's nothing there. The graph doesn't exist. So we just leave it where it's at. Last one. We have y equals negative absolute value of x. Absolute value is going to give you a V-shaped graph. So and using the same rules that we have here, we don't have anything else on the inside, so we're not shifting left or right. If we had something on the outside afterwards, we'd go up and down. Instead, we only have something in front, which ends up flipping our whole graph. So that little negative sign flips our regular V. That V starts at the origin, and we get that. Okay, using our constraints, we keep the graph that is larger than three. We keep the graph that's larger than three. So we find three, we build a little wall. So we gotta extend this out a little. We build a wall at three. We keep the graph that is larger than three. That's everything to the right side. Everything over on the left, goodbye, we don't need. At that wall, because we have an equal sign, we know we're gonna have a closed circle. So that graph that we thought was going to be a v ends up looking just like a linear line but that's just it um and that is everything we had to do here and this is graphing a piecewise function